Welcome to your first lab prep video where we're going to talk about mineral identification. In this lab, you're going to have a set of minerals, some testing supplies, and the lab documents that you've printed out before coming to class. So don't forget the identification chart. This is going to help you identify the different minerals. So what I want to do in this video is to kind of go through the basic properties while showing you some examples of the minerals. And this step-by-step -step outline is going to correlate nicely with those ID charts. So you're going to be recording these observations, the different tests you're going to do on a blank ID chart that you printed out and then using all that information to identify which mineral you're looking at. First property that you'll look for is luster. Is it metallic? So does it look like metal? Or is it non-metallic? Doesn't look like metal. Some examples of metallic minerals can be silver in color. They can be brassy or gold in color. Non-metallic mi minerals tend to be kind of dull or earthy. They have a reddish color. They can be shiny somewhat, but shininess doesn't necessarily mean metallic. Metallic just means has to look like metal. The next property is light versus dark. So light in color. Is it white, clear? or pink would be examples of light colored minerals. Dark colored minerals are going to be maybe reddish maroon in color. It could be black, brown in color. So these, the light versus dark is for non-metallic minerals only. So the next property that you'll test for is hardness and you'll use a glass plate like the one you see here. You can see there's lots of scratches on here. So you'll place it flat on the table, hold it with two hands, and then take your mineral and then try to scratch the glass with it. And then you'll see that you scratch the glass. So harder than glass. The next thing you'll do is try, if it doesn't scratch the glass, you'll take your fingernail and you'll try to scratch your fingernail on the sample and see if any comes off on your finger. And if it does, that means that the mineral is softer than your fingernail. The next thing is what's called cleavage. And cleavage is the way that a mineral breaks. And what ends up happening is because of the internal arrangement of the molecules and atoms, we end up with this plane of weakness that the mineral will always break on. And when you look at it in a sample, this one here, as I rotate it in front of the camera here, you can see that the light is reflecting off of that mineral all at the same time in that same face. If I rotate this around the other way, it's pretty dull. We don't get any reflection. But back around again, that same plane that you saw before is reflecting the light nicely. So this would be one plane of cleavage on this sample. You can have multiple ones. Like this sample here has this kind of boxy shape. And as I move it around, you can see the light reflecting off of one side, and then the next one, and then the next one on top here. So this one would have three planes of cleavage because it has this kind of boxy shape to it. Sometimes it's not a flat, even surface, but what you get is kind of this stair-stepped appearance. So the mineral might not break flat, but have this kind of a jagged edge, but it has that nice right angle break to it. And that is a plane of cleavage. And when I rotate that surface in the light, even though it's not totally flat, it has two different surfaces here, they both have broken off in the same plane. So that is one plane of cleavage. The next property you'll look for is what's called a streak, which is the mineral color when it's powdered. You use this little ceramic plate take your mineral and then see what color it is after you rub it on the glass. And then try a different one, give it a little different color. So you can have red, you can have yellow, you can have gray, you can have brown, white. The white ones you can't always see, so you might have to touch your finger on, and then see the white powder come off. So that's the streak. The next 
kind of other properties category is what's called acid reaction. And this is how you test for calcite. We'll put a little drop of weak hydrochloric acid on, and it bubbles, or effervesces. And if it bubbles, that means you have calcite. If it doesn't, like this one, will not, just kind of sits there, that means you don't have calcite. So make sure you wipe these samples off once you're done with them. Just don't worry, the, the hydrochloric acid won't burn your fingers off. It's not that strong, but don't put it in your eyes. The next test is to see if a mineral is magnetic or not. So take a magnet, I have a little black one here, touch the mineral with the magnet. If it's attracted, then it means it's magnetic. Pretty simple there. The next one is smell. So if you hold a sample up to your nose and you notice that it smells kind of sulfury or stinky, then you've got a smelly mineral. Usually sulfur is a good one that smells quite a bit. And then taste, halite, if you taste it, this mineral, which I suggest that you do not because many people have tested them with acid before you. Um, taste is uh, a test for halite, it'll taste salty, that's what table salt is. And you can just ask your instructor um, or send me an email with a picture and I'll let you know. And then the second to last would be a mineral's crystal form. When a mineral has the space to actually grow, it has open space and can build up on itself, you can get these really nice crystal forms that can develop. This is quartz, which when it doesn't have room to grow, ends up looking more like this. We don't see those nice crystal faces. It's just this kind of amorphous blob of quartz. The uh, other thing to look at, it kind of has to do with cleavage. If your cleavage face reflects the light and you see what's kind of like parallel scratches in that cleavage face, those are called striations. And these can be kind of tricky to spot. So if you are not sure, just ask me. Uh, the other thing is what's called the X solution lamellae. And what this is, is it's kind of a um, color variation that has these little squiggly lines in it. And both of these are in different types of feldspars. The X solution lamellae are going to be in your plagioclase feldspar. And, um, or sorry, the X solution lamellae are going to be in the potassium feldspar. And the striations are going to be in your plagioclase feldspar. So make sure once you've recorded all this information, you, in your chart, you use that information to identify which sample you have. And make sure you um, either email me or ask me if you have any questions about any of those samples. So thanks, and I'll see you in lab.